Hey everyone, it's Tickle, and in this video we're going over the latest changes for Shamans, Enhance, Ellie, Resto, in the latest build of the beta. They only have four weeks left until Shadowlands comes out, which means they have a lot of stuff to do. This week was not a tuning week, but we'll get into the changes, and this is the big important thing that you need to know. All of the changes that were made in the beta were not in the build notes. I did not see some of the things I'm about to show you having to do with echoing shock, having to do with maelstrom weapon. There are bug fixes that were probably just included but not mentioned in the patch notes. We're gonna go over the legendary changes. We're gonna go over the spell changes, most importantly, the covenant changes, and then the hidden changes where they fixed bugs. And if they did put out blue po a blue post about these, put them down below in the comments. And guys, thank you so much for the support lately. I really appreciate it. You should definitely come by the stream, twitch.tv slash tickle this, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time if you have any questions and hit that sub button because I know 75% of you have not done that yet. Let's go ahead and jump into the changes. First up, legendary changes. A lot of people focus on Elemental Shaman. They've gotten a lot of press uh, recently having to do with their infinite lava bursts. Well, in reality, we knew that was coming. We knew this change was coming, and it's okay. What they've done is they made the legendary deeply rooted elements no longer activate from bonus lava bursts from either Ascendance or Primordial Wave bonus lava bursts. If you don't know what that means, basically when you had Flame Shock on targets, and when you pressed Ascendance, it, it instantly lava burst all those targets. Similar with Primordial Wave. Primordial Wave, you put it on a target, which put a Flame Shock, and then your next lava burst went on everything. Now they're making it so only your casted lava bursts or, your, or their overload overloads, I would imagine, will proc this legendary. And when the legendary procs, you actually go into ascendance form. And when you go into ascendance form, you pop out all these uh, lava burst babies. So, and that hit all the flame shock targets. So what people were doing is they were maxing their mastery out so that they would have basically 100% chance to keep on lava bursting nonstop. That's no longer the case. You can't get your procs from your procs. People are upset about this, but in my opinion, this is the least invasive, least gutting change they could make. Everything works as normal with Ascendance and um, Primordial Wave. That's a good sign. It, it does mean in PvP, we're not gonna see those team one shots, but we knew that was coming. I think what it now allows us to do is get a more kind of consistent expectation of your damage. You're gonna be able to cast Flame Shock and everything. You're gonna be able to Ascendance or Primordial Wave, uh, you know, um, primordial wave first into an ascendance, and you're gonna get two waves of lava burst. That's kind of the expected outcome, not this stuff with the legendary that kind of worked out with the instant shot, uh, instant one shot cannon burst, right? Next up are the spell changes. Let's go ahead and jump right into those. There's not many to talk about. Uh, a tooltip update for static discharge. Control of lava was nerfed by 10% of its overall damage and its and its ramping damage, which is kind of uh, goes along with the lava burst instant shot instant one shots that were happening, which is, I mean, I've never, like, I'm kind of blown away that they nerfed this. I mean, I, I get why because of the legendary and the instant cast lava burst procs that are possible because using control lava basically makes it so you have to cast all your lava bursts. You're not getting the instant proc for an instant cast. Now, which is kind of what, I mean, that's okay. Like, all right, if that's the way it is, I get it, the tuning, okay. But the next one is very sad, and I just want to hear Rip for Elemental Blast in the comments. If you feel so bad for Elemental Blast, Elemental Blast has gone on this journey. It was it was just like, okay, in the beginning of the beta on Shadowlands, and all of a sudden they put it onto a different row. And so you can go Echo of the Elements, which gives you two Lava Bursts, and Elemental Blast. It's like, whoa, oh, okay. Okay, I'm liking this. And then all of a sudden they change it so that it's giving a percentage of stat instead of a flat stat. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm warming up to this. Next, they make it proc your legend. Well, they actually made it a spender, which was okay, which is kind of weird. But then they change it so that it wasn't a spender anymore, but it still procs your legendary effects and it procs surge of power. And we're like, yeah! It felt so good. I have an entire video about that. Look at the description about what they did and how, they're ch how they changed it. But then... That was the peak, that was the pinnacle. And then from there, they have removed Elemental Blast from proccing Surge of Power, and it was like, oh shit, it's happening. Uh, you know, start to, to you know burn everything. And then all of a sudden now, what they've done is they finished it off. They had the killing blow to Elemental Blast. I think it still could be viable. Some people were talking about builds in the stream the other day, but uh, man, what they've done is actually quite sad in my opinion, and it was a big deal. Was uh, uh, echoing Echoes of the Great Sundering when you cast Earthshock, and it used to be Elemental Blast or Elemental Blast. It would proc the um, increased Earthquake damage or the increased Lava Burst damage, and they took it off the Legendaries. This makes me sad because it was such a smooth rotation to have it in there. Now what you have to do, if you want to get use this Legendary, you basically need to build up to 60 Maelstrom, use an Earth Shock, and then you have to build up to 60 Maelstrom again to use an Earthquake that's buffed. It is kind of disjointed. It's not impossible, but it's kind of a slow thing to do now versus what it was, which was very smooth, very fluid. So so, so the change makes me a pretty sad boy, especially for Elemental Blast. 
It's quite sad. Next up for Enhancement. Enhancement got Doom Winds, which is a legendary dropping Wind Fury Totem. Grants you a 100% chance now to get Wind Fury stacks. Not an increased chance, not a 100% increased chance, but just a 100% chance to get Wind Fury weapon for 8 seconds. This is okay. I'm a little disappointed that it's still on a 1 minute cooldown. It's only for 8 seconds. Um, I, I kind of wish it would also not be the chance to get Wind Fury. I wish it would be the damage of Wind Fury. We are okay with the fact that it's an RNG proc. What we're not okay with is the fact that it doesn't do a lot of damage. So that's my big complaint here is, you know, you've changed it to be 100% chance but we don't care about the chance we want the rng proc because that's what's satisfying that's what enhanced shamans want so i'm going to keep moving resto shaman got to change to the text of this legendary it still works exactly the same stacking 10 percent every time you uh healing wave or healing surge increases the healing done by chain heal by 10 percent stacking five times up to 50 percent buff on your next one okay seems good so that's that now let's go ahead and jump into the covenant changes number one let's go ahead and go over here this thing is first covenant change here okay number one uh chain harvest now ignores targets that are under crowd control this was a complaint about chain harvest being able to break cc well now it won't break cc which is good news it makes it more viable in pvp and even potentially pve next up fey transfusion this has a number of changes okay number one they made it so that the heal went from eight people getting healed to four people okay the other thing is it still hits four people, but now it's splitting the damage. Before it was, it would do X number of damage to every one of the four targets. It would do 100% of that, whatever the damage number was, to each of those targets. Now it's splitting them. The reason this is important is now to optimally use this, you could have one target or four targets. You're still going to do the same output of da uh, the same total output of damage. But in PvP, and I will show you a clip, you will be able to use it with devastating potential effect. Specifically, if you're a freaking Resto Shaman, I got one shot by a Resto Shaman by channeling this on me. Arnold, I'm looking at you. So that's the deal. Uh, this is now, you'll see it, it got buffed as well. So this is actually a contester now, which is a good news because I know a lot of people want to go Night Fae for the gardens or for the uh, the look of the armor, etc. Lastly, Primordial Way. Primordial Way has been changed to be an instant cast ability, basically giving Ellie Shamans, Flame, uh, Ellie Shamans, Rest of Shamans, Enhanced Shamans, a free Flame Shock. Now we have two Flame Shocks. We have Flame Shock, and then we have Primordial Wave, which is on a 45 second cooldown to Flame Shock again. And they did it instant cast, which is also nice for Enhanced Shaman and everything. You don't have to cast it, which means Enhanced Shaman don't have to waste five Maelstrom weapon stacks, which is a feature of Enhanced Shaman, if you have any questions, put it down below, um, to use this build, a button, which is very good. The only bad news is that they didn't change anything to make it more viable with Enhance. I still think this is a wonky ability with Enhance. Enhance, it repeats all lightning bolts for Ellie and Resto. You know, Ellie repeats a Lava Burst. Resto repeats any... Um, Oh, sorry, uh, Resto, it uh, puts a Riptide on a target, my bad. And it will repeat any healing wave onto all those targets with Riptide, which is actually very, very nice. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, it is something that is, I think, a little bit undervalued. It's pretty rad. Now let's go ahead and go back and talk about the buffs again, specifically. They doubled the scaling of spell power of Night Fae, uh, the Fae Transfusion. And like I said, now we're focused on if you hit one target, you're going to do all the damage. If you hit two targets, they're both going to get half the damage. It's going to split like that. And that's why it's so devastating if you hit only one target. The next ability, when this one has some hidden changes we'll talk about here in a minute, the spell damage, the spell power scaling of Chain Harvest was buffed by another 70%. 69% actually, but why though? I don't know. Well, I'll show you the damage that I can do in some arena screen uh, video uh, clips or, uh, later. I did a dungeon with it. It feels so good for enhance. Okay, there's some. Uh, so that's what they did there. And la uh, uh, lastly, well, two other things. Primordial wave is getting uh, your extra healing waves or your extra lava burst are going to be doing 100% of normal damage, which I mean, I think that means it won't get scaled up with like control of lava. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and lastly, Vesper totem got a little bit of a nerfy nerf. Uh, they got a uh, some spell power scaling reduction on its damage and also on its healing, which is kind of weird to me. Maybe this is because people have been saying that it's the only viable PvE option. Now it looks like Vesper Totem's getting taken off the favorites list and Venther is getting pushed to the forefront, especially with and Night Fae. I mean, they're all kind of looking kind of... I mean, am I overly impressed with any of them? Actually, yes, now I am, and I'll show you why. But, uh, but Vesper Totem was kind of the default for PvE, and now I think they're changing it up. They're balancing things out a little bit, uh, but in kind of a ridiculous manner, as you'll see in some of these arena uh, videos. The only other thing I'll mention is that the legendary for increasing the 
earth sh uh, earthquake damage is actually bugged right now and it's actually increasing the damage in some cases by 500% instead of 250. This is unintentional and this is going to be fixed, which isn't necessarily great news for the Elemental Shaman, which just got that, uh, that reduction of smoothness of play with Elemental Blast proccing that legendary and now where it's also going to do less potential damage. It was doing 500, in some say, situations 250 in others. So that's going to be adjusted and fixed. So keep that in mind. Now what we're going to do next, guys, we're going to jump into game and we're going to go ahead and look at some of the hidden changes. Why am I calling them hidden? Because you didn't see in those patch notes anything about what I'm about to show you. Uh, don't tell Blizzard they're doing pretty good. Now what we're going to do, and if you want to know anything about this artifact appearances and how you can get those set up, I'll put that down in the description as well. But what I'm going to show you now is the deal with Chain Harvest. This is a change that was not mentioned. And it's this. Uh, I will show you right now. Number one, Chain Harvest is your Covenant ability, right? This is uh, sending a wave of Anima at the target, hitting up to five targets and healing up to five enemies. Deals 6k damage. Okay, you might say to yourself, Tickle, 6k damage is not that much. What are you even, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Um, well, if we look at it, 6k damage. This previously was not stacking with Maelstrom Weapon stacks. But, boys and girls, we got some good news. It sure is now. It sure is now. It's hitting now for double that damage. 12k normal hits. If it crits, you'll see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show it off even more by using Sky Fury Totem. Uh, ready? Here we go. We're going to go ahead and use it. The instant cast goes out. It didn't crit once, but I did 106k damage. Well, no, I didn't. I did 67k damage. I hit for 12k onto five targets. That was with one button press. That is the potential now of this ability for Venther. If it crits, imagine it does more than double that damage if it crits. Close to 30,000 with, with Sky Fury up. So you have to think this is a, now a huge contender. The other thing you have to remember, too, is if you have... The con there's a conduit that actually increases its crit chance by 10%. 10, uh, 10 that will scale up over time. Every time you crit, the cooldown is reduced by 5 seconds. So I know Vesper Totem is on a 1-minute cooldown. Uh, Night Phase on a 2-minute. This one's on a 1 1.5, but it can go down as you crit. And I'm hoping your crit rate is more than mine when you get, uh, get geared up. So this is actually a really big deal because previously this ability was not doing this much damage. And I'll show you some. Again, I'm going to show you some Arena Clips with this um, where we were we basically one-shot people if you get a crit. Yeah, I'm not saying that's good. I'm actually saying that uh, two things on this. Number one, it's viable in PvE. And it's actually ridiculous. Like, it's doing a huge amount of damage, which is very good for us in PvE. We like this, especially for uh, mob packs and in Mythic Pluses. But actually, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm concerned. Why am I concerned? Because I don't want to have to fall into the trap of the whole borrowed power discussion. I don't want to have I don't want to have things doing damage that aren't my class. I mean, I'll accept it if if that's what the only way I'm going to be. I mean, working. I guess I don't know. But <laughs> but like, what chain harvest is doing sixty percent of my damage on a on a pull. It's not really a good sign. It's not really a good sign for the class, and I'll show you in this boss fight, for example. It didn't do top damage, but it was hitting for 25... It was a, That was actually hitting for 25k normals, which is kind of nuts. I would did I, uh, This is a Mythic Plus, right? Davos. I was my second damage doing 10% of my damage, critting for 26ks in that Mythic 9. So it's doing huge damage, and a single target is doing okay if it crits. Like, 26k is great. Um... Um, but just keep that in mind as it's only hitting one target. You do need to also have those Maelstrom stacks up, so I'll do it again here. I'm going to use my Ani's Trinket as well. Ani's Trinket, Sky Fury. I'm going to use it. Hit a 37k crit. Now tell me that is nuts or what. So that's crazy, especially if you're using those Ani's Trinkets now that are boosting your main stat. Nuts. 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 That is huge damage. That was one of the hidden changes you didn't see, is that now we are getting that scaling using Maelstrom Weapon. Now, the next change is going to be about Ellie. Ellie with Venther. This one's pretty cool. What it has to do with is Echoing Shock. Echoing Shock is an ability where if I push it on this target, and then I Lava Burst once, right? I'm going to use it. it. One second later, it uses it, it casts the spell again, which is pretty cool. Now, it's actually one of the coolest abilities in the game, in my opinion, especially for Shamans, one of the cool things that they've added. Now, the issue was that uh, Echoing Shock was not working with Chain Harvest. You would use Echoing Shock, you'd use Chain Harvest, nothing would happen. It, w it wouldn't be impressive, not nothing would change. But now, Blizzard has made it so that Echoing Shock does work with Chain Harvest, which actually makes this ability competitive with Vesper Totem. Makes it very competitive with, I mean, all, all the Covenants in terms of the amount of damage it does, because it's going to hit twice, 
It's going to hit once, hit five targets potentially, and then it's going to repeat, hit five targets. The key about this is that both times it hits, it's going to hit a total of 10 times. That is 10 times to potentially get a crit. And each crit, you reduce the cooldown by five seconds. That means if you crit everything, that's a reduction of 50 seconds off the, uh, off the cooldown, which brings it down to about a 20 second, oh wait, no, 50, uh, a 40 second cooldown. That's extremely competitive. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like here. Oh, you know, I'll be casting. I'm doing my thing, right? It is shadow damage, so I can't use Master, um, Master of the Elements. I'm going to Echo, and then I'm going to cast Chain Harvest. Repeats twice, and I crit a bunch of times. So there, similar to the Enhanced Shaman, I'm getting some big damage output. I crit two times, which means the cooldown was reduced by 10 seconds, and it's already down to 1 minute 9 seconds. But I did, it did, uh, um, each hit of the crit hit 14,000. I didn't even use Sky Fury there. And each normal hit hit for 6k. Now, not as impressive as the Enhanced Shaman, but you don't have the Maelstrom weapon scaling the similar that you do to an enhanced shaman, but you are getting those double casts. This is still a huge amount of damage, and it's a huge amount of damage in a single cast. For PvE and PvP, very, seems very good, especially because it's on a different school for PvP as well. People really have to watch out for this cast being going off from an alley shaman, and in an enhanced shaman, you can't even stop it. I got one shot by Jibby the other day, or just last night, uh, with Chain Harvest. If it crits you, you die. Um, which is kind of crazy and it kind of seems to be the theme of the shaman is like holy crap we're gonna have a lot of things that hit really freaking hard so that's the venther hidden changes that i wanted to bring up to you and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over and i'm gonna show you what it looks like on the night fey this is one i know people have been asking a lot about they're saying hey it doesn't seem like it's gonna be competitive and now it might really be for a few reasons. And it was in my Covenant video about Enhanced Shaman and Ellie Shaman, all that stuff. But for Enhanced Shaman, you have to remember that the mastery is scaling and buffing nature damage by 24%. You also, like that will actually affect the Night Fae channel. Also, if I use my racials and I use my Anu's trinkets, it does quite a lot. I'm highlighting it here. It says it does 18K to target, uh, and it will split up, you know, the targets for 2.3 seconds. And what you'll see in what you saw in the, what you'll see in the arena clip too, is that uh, it shreds. It just absolutely shreds. Now, the problem with Enhanced Shaman is that in PvP, it's going to be particularly hard to use this ability because you're in melee, you're channeling. It's very evident when they're using it. I think the best people to use this actually is probably a Resto Shaman because they're not necessarily always watching you and the melee won't necessarily be training you, so you can use it to pretty devastating effect, especially if you root them first, for example. Root Cap, use it. What I've noticed is that people have been, uh, what people have been suggesting to me too is that use Cap Stun and then once you get that, you channel on top of it because the capstone's three seconds and the channel is 2.3. And I'm pretty sure it goes down with haste. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how much damage you could possibly do. I'm going to maximize it as much as possible using this legendary and using Earthen Spike. Earthen Spike uh, making the target take 20% additional nature damage. This legendary similarly, can I can buff the nature damage increased by using Frost Shock. So here we go. I'm going to use Frost Shock. It gives me the buff. We're going to use Earthen Spike. going to use my legendary. You're going to use this. I'm going to use Lust. And then we're going to channel. You can probably see there that it was hit, hit for 44k channel, single target. Now, that's the difference. You saw like 70k, 80k on Chain Harvest. That was hitting five targets. This is single target. This hit this target for ticks of 6k. I didn't get a single crit. That is incredibly unlucky. Um, it would have crit for 12ks, right? But 44k damage is double health pool. Uh, I don't know what, when we're fully geared at 60, but we're also going to have better gear, so more damage, more mastery potentially at 60 as well. So this is a huge damage dealer. You're going to start seeing this, and you better watch out because rest of shamans also are particularly scary with this because they have uh, Spearwalker's Grace, which makes it so they cannot get interrupted. I also think from a PvE standpoint, this is particularly powerful because, again, in PvE, if you're, if you're going against a raid, a single, a single target, if you channel this on them, it's going to do 44k damage in that 2.3 second channel. That is huge. And if you use Chain Harvest, it's going to hit for like 12k max on that one single boss. So this might be the best single target possibility, which is such a, a, a surprise. Now, again, I'm not telling you which one is doing the most damage. I'm just giving you my hypotheticals. You're going to have to go to the Boys in Earth Shrine to really get those numbers. And once those Sims come out, we'll know for sure. I'm just looking at the numbers on my screen, and I'm just saying... 44k to a single target now that's savage so we're going to get testing on this on the uh on more videos guys we're going to be coming out with more stuff on the stream i want to thank you guys so much for hanging out these are the changes these are the little hidden things now necrolord i will i you know i could go over there and show it to you but it's just basically instant cast and vesper totem 
nerf is just a reduction of that damage. So if you guys have any questions here, if you want to know anything else, you want me to make any other videos, put it down below in the comments. I appreciate all the support. Appreciate all the all the love, guys. We've been going for Twitch partner on Twitch. We haven't heard back, but either way, we're going to be throwing a party once we hear back from them. Uh, it'll be a one-month anniversary tomorrow if we get Twitch partner and ask. That'll be a big deal. But I want to thank you guys so much for the love, so much for the support. You guys have been absolutely crazy through the Shadowlands. I love meeting new Shaman buddies. Um, and with that being said, we will see you in the next video or on stream, guys. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.